Hey guys, Dan Torsman with CBReptile.com, your home for captive red reptiles and reptile accessories. And joining us today is our red eye crocodile skink. Our friend the crocodile skink is going to be getting its red eye name from the accents around their eyes. These are also going to be getting their crocodile name from the spines all the way down its back and its lower body. The ideal temperature for your very own crocodile skink is going to lie somewhere between 73 degrees at the lower end and towards the higher end about 81 degrees. If you're seeing that your temperature at night is dropping below 70 or towards that 70 range, what you want to do is make sure that you keep that up during that nighttime to that 73 at the minimum. Crocodile skinks are going to absolutely love their humidity. They're going to need about 70% humidity to about 90% humidity and that's going to be all year round. So in order to keep that humidity up, we have a few things and the tank is going to be pretty much set up as a humid tank. So we'll show you exactly how to do that to ensure that you're gonna retain that 70 to 90% humidity, which is outrageous amounts of humidity, but it's exactly what your crocodile skink is gonna love. So now that we know a little bit about the background information and everything you need to know before purchasing your very own red-eyed crocodile skink, let's talk about the enclosure and what you're gonna to need to do to keep them healthy. First up is we have the 20 gallon long terrarium right here. So this 20 gallon long is gonna give them the ample floor space that they need. They're not huge climbers. Uh, they actually like to hide a lot during the day and they are nocturnal. So you're gonna be wanting to give them a little bit more of that, um, that privacy, a little bit more hide room, but also that room uh, on the bottom of your terrarium, a lot of floor space. So next up is going to be our substrate. Substrate is going to be the ideal thing to be keeping the moisture in. So it's going to be across the bottom of your terrarium, probably about four inches deep. So you're going to want to get the big bag of our forest floor and change that out once a month. Or if you ever see any mold growing, you want to change that out immediately. Cypress mulch is super important, that forest floor that we're talking about, for keeping the humidity in your terrarium up. It is a cypress mulch, so it's all natural and it's going to be great for them and their natural habitat. It's not going to give them any type of contamination or uh, any kind of chemicals that might harm them long term. Uh, if you ever see any type of mold build up inside of that, you're going to want to change it and change it at least once a month uh, to ensure that you're getting fresh stuff for your reptile. Uh, another way that we're going to keep that humidity up and right on top of that forest floor is going to be some of our sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is absolutely great because unlike terrarium moss, uh, the green moss, uh, that's going to be giving you a little bit more of a uh, water holding effect. So it acts a little bit more than the traditional terrarium moss, the sphagnum moss, as a sponge. Uh, covering that sponge across the entirety, um, or at least a you know two-thirds percentage of your terrarium, uh, and on top of that forest floor with that sphagnum moss is going to help lock in a little bit of that moisture, as well as give that base to reabsorb any of the moisture that gets uh, you know, evaporated from the very top where that sphagnum moss is. So the sphagnum moss will suck more of that moisture out from the substrate underneath of it. So these are going to be two ways that we can keep in the humidity, that sphagnum moss and the forest floor, but also right here is going to be a reptifogger. Reptifoggers are great for keeping your, uh, your humidity up super, super high. So this can be set on a timer um, to ensure that uh, you can get that 90% humidity at the high end and that 70% at the very low end. These are going to be great for adding a little bit of effect to your terrarium as well. So, um, you know, having a little bit of a fog show is pretty cool. Moving on from the humidity aspect, which is going to be huge, let's talk a little bit about the aesthetics of your terrarium. So first and foremost, let's talk about the hide. Hides are really important for these guys because they are nocturnal and they're going to want to feel a little bit more safe. They're not necessarily the greatest for handling, but they will tolerate it, specifically if you have a captive bred uh, crocodile skink. So make sure that you're always buying captive bred reptiles, uh, just to be sure that you're going to get the healthiest and most people-friendly animal possible. The hide that we're going with today is going to be a plastic hide. This is going to be uh, a Zoomed hide. Uh, you want to make sure that you get something that's going to be, uh, you know, not necessarily made of organic material because of the high moisture. Um, uh, organic material such as cork or a half log will actually uh, decompose and break down a little bit, cause really bad things for your animal. So you want to make sure that you get a plastic one so you get more use out of it. Sitting pretty next to that hide over there is going to be, right in front of it, uh, a piece of driftwood. Driftwood's great because it gives them a little bit of a porous area for them to crawl over. It gives them that area that they're going to be um, you know, looking for as far as a little bit of a hide. So you can put it at an angle somewhere. Um, that way that if they feel that they need to be a little bit more secure, they can kind of run behind it. So you always want to make sure that there's going to be a place for your crocodile skink um, to have that little bit of security all over your terrarium. 
helping out with the edges, corners, and the entire back of your terrarium. Uh, we have over here a little bit of vines. So these vines are going to be fake vines that you can put around the outside of your terrarium uh, along the glass and have it hang down. So that can be a nice area or a nice canopy that will give a good effect for your crocodile skink uh, and allow them to feel like they're in their own habitat on the forest floor. Also around that base of your terrarium, there's gonna be a few things lying around for the help of your crocodile skink. So our red-eyed crocodile skinks are going to love bathing. Uh, for a size like this, one of our babies, what we'll be doing is giving out, um, you know, one of our uh, reptables. These medium-sized reptables are going to be great to make sure that they're going to be able to fit their entire body within them, just so they can give their whole body a soak if they want. Also, along with the reptable, we're gonna be talking about our mealworm dish. These guys are going to be insectivores, so they love their insects. That's basically all they're gonna be eating. Um, so in order to make sure that their insects aren't going to be getting away from them, they're not going to be running around their cage rampant, specifically when we're talking about superworms. Superworms can actually cause some damage to your, to your reptile. These guys have pretty nice defense mechanism. Their scales on their backs are going to be really, really good, um, you know, to make sure they're not gonna get attacked but these bugs will team up on them. Uh, so what we do is we, get, we make sure that you guys get a mealworm dish. Mealworm dish, dishes are curved at the edges so they can't get out. Um, they're also gonna be eating crickets. Crickets are great. Um, they can be outside of this bowl um, and they can run around your cage wild. Uh, they do get a little bit noisy if you have too many in at one time and they can start breeding. Um, so dubia roaches are also a really great option for these guys. Um, and then of course, we can also give them some earthworms. So as far as heating and lighting for our red-eyed crocodile skink, they are going to be needing very, very little. Uh, so there's a bit of a stipulation um, whether the house temperature is going to be enough to keep your guys safe. Um, so we will recommend that you guys get um, our, uh, our medium to small uh, heating mat and that can go on the bottom of your terrarium towards one side. Make sure that you're localizing that to one side. Um, these reptiles are going to be regulating their temperature with their environment. So if you have it too far all over it, um, they're not gonna have the ability to walk from a closer to 73 degree area to a closer to 81 degree area. And that's what we're hopefully looking for in this situation. So that's where we're gonna be putting this heating mat on the side. If you realize that you don't need it and you keep your house um, around the same temperature that the crocodile skink will like you to, um, then you might not need that. But make sure that you buy one just in case because uh, you'd rather be safe than sorry. There's a bit of controversy on the subject on whether or not your red-eyed crocodile skank is going to be needing UV. We always provide our crocodile skanks with UV. Uh, and it definitely, you know, we see a difference in the livelihood um, between, you know, what we hear from other people and what we see in our crocodile skanks. So uh, that's what they get here at cbreptile.com. So we would highly recommend that you guys also follow suit, get yourself a UVB hood lamp. The hood lamp is going to give a nice spectrum across the entirety of your 20 gallon long. Um, so that wide variety is going to be allowed to be picked up during that 12 hours of the daytime, um, no matter where they are in that terrarium. Of course, that is going to not necessarily apply too heavily when it comes down to them hiding or them running under the brushes. So even if they're not looking for that UV, they have the areas where they can walk around where they're not gonna be getting the UV. So don't think that you're going to be giving them way too much um, or overdoing it. Also, along with the UV, what we're going to be using is some Reptical, and Reptical is a calcium supplement. It's going to have some vitamins in there that is going to help them from developing such diseases as metabolic bones disease. So you want to give that a sprinkle over top of your insects two to three times a week to ensure that they're going to be getting the nutrients that they need that's outside of those insect diets. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. This has been Dan the Taurus Man with CBReptile.com, and this has been our red-eyed crocodile skink happy to be here and happy to be on camera. They are absolutely adorable and available now at cbreptile.com if you want to slide by and pick them up. Everything that you see on this table and everything that you're going to need to provide the healthy home for your crocodile skank is also available at cbreptile.com. Also, if you guys like the video, please shoot us that like, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring the bell icon to ensure that you stay updated on everything cbreptile.com. Dan Torsman signing out, and I'll see you guys next time at cbreptile.com.